My people, the Chickasaw, were a tribe of great and mighty warriors who lived in the southeastern woodlands. But in 1837, President Jackson removed my people from their sacred homelands. My English father and Chickasaw mother traveled the treacherous Trail of Tears to Indian Territory. Once arrived, disease claimed my mother. We sent her spirit along the White Dog Road to join our ancestors. My father went east to return to his prior life, promising one day to return. Raised by my mother's people, my sister and I struggled to survive in two worlds. That of the Chickasaw, who understood the richness and beauty of this new land. And that of the white man, whose greed brought nothing but death and destruction. Jack, get you a Chickasaw horse, you might have a chance. Hey, you just be happy it's your wedding day. <laughs> we both let you win. Let's go again, and I'll beat you all twice. You're lucky you won, Montford Johnson, else I might not be marrying you. <laughs> Even if I got second? <laughs> That's a strong real woman. <laughs> hey, you ain't married yet. Well, just because I married your sister don't mean you have to marry mine. Figured it was only fair. <laughs> First place. Whee! Enjoy it. It's your wedding gift. Keep it, soldier. I want to redo. No, y'all better get cleaned up or else none of you's coming to my wedding. <laughs> I warned you people, never bet against a Chickasaw pony. Oh, I got me some wedding gifts now. Hey, I only saw six head of cattle. Well, Union Russell stole five. I gave one to Granny. Should feed her through winter. Shameful. Someone takes a man's livestock, he takes away everything. Most folks I know are turning their cattle loose up in the hills, so the blue bellies can't find them. Rising Wolf, my Cheyenne friend. So glad you could make it, brother. You're a blessed man, my friend. As the fires of war rage across our lands, let us celebrate the good things that have brought us here today. These gifts represent everything. Who is that? Jesse Chisholm. Montfrey, I'm sorry. I saw him coming this way. I tried to talk him out of it. 
But they insisted. Be careful with this commander. They're looking for any good horses. Jack, hide the horse. And Confederate soldiers. Battling to cover a mic. Whose place is this? It's mine. How may we help you, Sergeant? Well, I haven't killed no rebels in almost a week now. Well, you won't find any here. This man a rebel, Chisholm? Can't say I know him. Well, looks like we got ourselves a regular uprising going on here. We got Cheyenne, Kiowa. Now, why is he you engine sided with the Rebs? Could be because the Union broke every treaty it ever made with us. Get you to thinking, don't it? What's your name, Engine? Montford Thomas Johnson. <laughs> well, shoot, that ain't no engine name I ever heard before. My mother was Chickasaw. My father, English. That's so. You must be waging quite the internal conflict. Your own personal civil war. Which side's winning? I'm Chickasaw. Looks like you chose the wrong side. Well, Mr. Monifer Thomas Johnson, I'm gonna search your place now. And if I find one rebel on this property, I'm gonna hang you for treason. Then I'm gonna shoot every other man here and burn your place to the ground, you understand? Like I said, ain't no rebels here. Better not be. Spread out! family moved out west. Not too far from here. Had big dreams. The wild engines didn't care nothing about no big dreams. They came in the night, surrounded the caravan, and did what you wild engines do. They killed them all. Except me. Because I hid under my father's dead body. <laughs> No horses or men, just these sorry cattle. Yeah, we'll take what we can get. Both for the cattle! Uh, Sir, we depend on those! Well, according to Libra Code Article 39, martial law extends persons and property that are subject to the enemy. That means we can take what we want. Neither officers nor soldiers are allowed to make use of their position of power for private gain. Article 42, Sergeant. Are you an engine lover? Proud to say I am. Well, howdy, Mama. Come on out here. Come on. Come on. It's okay. I think I could be an engine lover, too. Sergeant, we need to move. If you want to make the fort by sundown, See you soon. Now get back over here. We're gonna finish what we started. They ain't ruining my day. No, sir. Everyone as you were, okay? This is a blessed occasion, and I'm not gonna let a little bit of rain spoil it. You got there. You know, I'm always going to take care of you. 
I know you will. Let's go inside and you can start taking care of your wife now. Pinky Chihua. Like the spring, we are grateful for the new blessings of life. Meet your son, Edward Bryant. We ask that you sanctify our children. Give them wisdom, abundance, and love of family. We give thanks for your word in this time of war that sets brother against brother, father against son. Give your angels charge over the protection of our people as they fall victim to the ravages of war. You're the fortress against those who seek to harm us. You are our refuge and our strength. That's the last of Let's move out. If it is your will that we should sit among our ancestors, let it be as winter's rest and in the presence of your fire. Toblashki, Kushna, Chihawaba, Chito Chisha. This drop is killing us. Edward Bryant, come here, son. One thing I learned from the Manual Labor Academy is you got to go deep in the ground. Can't just scratch the surface. Them gophers go to the academy with you? I do for you. This is the half breed I told you about. Fine for Johnson? Yeah, that's me. Lieutenant Richard Pratt, new commander at Port Sill. You know General Lee surrendered. Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia, April 9th. War's over? It is indeed. Thank the good Lord. Yes, ma'am. We're all on the same side again. I'd appreciate you letting your neighbors know. Yeah, I'll let them know. That we're on the same side. Thank you. But if you have a problem, you come see me. Ma'am? You need something? Herd looks a bit thin. Shame you can't provide for your pretty wife. Kinda of takes away everything it means to be a man. Army's fat with cattle. We'd be happier to sell it to someone for half the wholesale price. Someone meaning me. Army's shifting focus. Going after the wild engines. Your kind. We need eyes and ears. An inside man to keep us informed. You got the wrong someone. Such a nice family, too. Pardon me? You have a splendid day, Montford Thomas Johnson. savings. Confederate dollars. They're worthless. We'll get through it. 
I'm down to one cow. We gotta pay Jack with something. We can't lose him. Papa, I'm hungry. I know, son. Let's find you something. Someday soon, this pasture is going to be filled with grazing cattle. From here to the horizon and back. And one day, you'll have a ranch of your own. Filled with cattle with your brand. The brand is permanent. It means you're part of something much bigger. You belong. And belonging is forever. Coyotes. There's coyotes out there. I heard it too. Jack, let's get him in the corral. Open the gate. Where'd they come from? Must have come down off the mountains. That's Joe Carlton's brand. This one here's out of Cochran's. That one right there. That's a Maverick. No brand, so he's yours. Mister, you just doubled your stock overnight. <laughs> we gotta bring him back to Joe and Alec in the morning. Probably wrote him off as lost for good. Yeah, but I bet that's more up there. Four years is a long time for cattle in the wild. Yeah, I mean, if they survive the wolves and panthers and such, there's, there's got to be more. And do you see Joe or Alec, given their age or health, lighting up there after him? No. Hill country's too dangerous. And full of cattle that have been breeding for years. Unbranded. Well, what do you think, Mr. Carlton? You want me to agree to let you buy any of my cattle that you can round up? Cattle, I don't already given that one that's lost. Yes, sir. And I don't do nothing. You pay me my share when you sell them to the next fella? That's correct. Go on. Go on up there and get them all. <laughs> I'm not fixing to be brush popping no bees one after the other. That's just plain crazy. Gotta figure out how to get them to us. Trap them. Just like the devil traps men with beautiful women. <laughs> yep. That's it right there. I got it. Salt. We'll trap them with salt. They'll do anything for a taste.
We got it. Go fetch some water. You can talk about your farms and your cattlemen charms, but the cowboys. Come on in. Thank you, sir. Evening. We're just wandering. Me and my man. Cold and hungry. Need some solace at your fire? Some smells good there. Yeah. Oh, you smell the voice? Huh? I do my best. So, uh... What's, uh... Boy, like a cell? Dinner here in the night. Just looking for lost cows. <laughs> Brings you gentlemen out to this part of the country. We just rode up from Texas. We're hunters. I thought we'd come and try and scout some game. What type of game you fancy? Here we go. You see, uh, these Mexican regulators. They give us 150 pesos. Comanche, Apache scalps. Could we see you know. Any old Redskin scalp will do. Because uh, a savage is a savage. It's a savage. <laughs> ah, you all right, boy? This scalp here? That wouldn't make me a wooden penny. Wrong texture, you see. But I do have a few questions. Have you seen any redskins around here? No, sir. No Indians around here that I know of. Are you lying to me, boy? I did see some soldiers, though. No Indians. Evening. Oh, oh, oh. Easy there, Coach. Oh. No French here. You Texans overstayed your welcome. They always do. Hey. Don't leave us out here with absolutely nothing. It's dangerous things out here. Keep the knife. No knife. You get to keep your life. Seems like a fair deal, huh? You get your britches in a bunch there, Chief. You boys... You boys are gonna regret us. Threaten me again. I'll kill you. Best believe me when I say I'm gonna do something, I do. I believe he would. I'm gonna walk out of here, okay? You better go, boy. Boy. 
Let's move. No more fires. We sleep in shifts. Hey, man. I hear you, brother. Welcome back. Oh, y'all are a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> oh, son. Y'all find any cattle? Oh, yeah. We found a bunch. They're up there roaming more than we can count. Oh, yes, ma'am. Well, where are they? Oh, we just have to be a little bit better prepared next time, that's all. I was afraid that... Oh, we're going back out there for sure. Oh. Yeah, gonna... Keep him in that pasture right over there. Gonna build a cattle tank. Fence off the jaw. <laughs> Edward Bratt and I can handle that. All right. Yeah. We're gonna bring back a bunch. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Seems like you both need something to eat. Jack, please join us. Oh, that'd be just fine. Thank you, ma'am. says Red Devil thrust it up 50 in his. They look familiar? Yeah. Never mind. You lie! <laughs> <laughs> you think anyone's gonna care about a dead engine? Think about your wife. That little boy. He's belonging to me. Well, sir, I got a white man who says they're his. Who do you think the law's gonna believe? This ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> I consider all these wild cattle out here property of the U.S. government. I consider you wrong. You want to make some real money, Mont, for Thomas Johnson? Army's putting a premium on buffalo hides. You realize you're taking away everything these people have? Huh? Thinking he has no buffalo to hunt. They got to change their ways. Stay on the reservation. Yeah, what good is that? Control and progress. Don't you get it? It's why we always win and engines always lose. Always a pleasure, Monty. <laughs> yeah. Next Maverick we lay eyes on, we brand it. I get myself up 
Put the rising sun and take all I got and put it on the line. Long as I'm able, I'll push through. I'm gonna keep on keeping on. My aim is faithful, ain't it true? What I do, I do. I'll take them. All right. Thank you, Jesse. Bower Square. Mumford Johnson. You're a good man. That's who I want to be. Long as I'm able, I'll push through. I'm going to keep on. Hey, sis. <laughs> Look at all this. Mother would have been proud. Father would be proud, too. <laughs> Father. <laughs> do you remember his face? I do. Thing is, I don't. When the memories piece them together for me, it just turns into a shadow. I've forgiven him. Not me. Forgotten. Not forgiven. there to feed the tribes for months. in the stench. Death. I can't get it out of your mind. Come up on some Kiowa well, looking hopeless. What are they gonna eat? Maybe God blessed us. So we could bless others. <laughs> hey, you can pass some of these on to the Tribes hurt by the buffalo slaughter? Sure. I'm sure they can use them. Hey. Isn't that rising wool?
What happened? Where is it? We were camped near Lodge Pole River. The soldiers appeared with the sunrise and started shooting. Which soldiers? Long hair and his men. They came from the north. Fort Supply. Custer. Is there a battle? All of the men were out hunting. We heard the gunshots and the screams. It wasn't a battle, it was a massacre. I'm so sorry. Black Kettle had returned the night before. He tried to make peace. But the soldiers, they killed him and his wife. <laughs> shot all the horses before they slaughtered the women and the children. We got out who we could. What can I do for you, brother? We were on our way to go to Jesse's to trade. I just left Jesse with a bunch of cattle. Take whatever you need. You're welcome to stay at the homestead. Thank you. We'll take the cattle. But we have our own path to follow. Ours will cross again. Tend to two inside. Come on. Can we track him? We'll track him in the morning. Y'all go inside. I'll keep watch. In case they come back. In case they come back. Nothing from the horses. There's a weasel right there. Wild and long faces, boys. Do you believe this fella? He's got some nerve. Where's all the cattle? Cattle? Well, oh, must have slipped your mind. Tell us about the Redskin. 
And a black fella. They shot me. Head of hair we have here, boys. His uniform says you'll hang! Please kill me. You must have me killed and all my men killed. For what? This string of rancid horse meat! We'll get the whole herd next time. Hey, I do know the whereabouts of plenty of engines. Whole wagon load of scouts. Oh, well, it looks like they split up here. Divided my horses. One group went down yonder. The other one went. Well, well, well. What is it? Ammo pouch. Indians use those? No. No, they don't. State your business, Johnson. Our business is with Lieutenant Pratt. I said state your business or ride on. As soon as I speak to Lieutenant Pratt. Mr. Johnson, how can I help you? Lieutenant? You told me to come see you if I ever had a problem. My office. Double time, thank you. What is it? We found it at the Rustless Camp. Sure it belongs to someone around here. The even Indians, always stealing from us. The even, huh? You know, Lieutenant, the past two years, white men been rustling stock all over the territory. Talking about Indians done it. You create enough bad blood between the farmers, ranchers, and the Indians, we end up forced on a reservation. If that is the case, I certainly don't approve of the means, but you must admit the ends do render a safer United States. And the Indian must fall in line with American society or he will become extinct. Yeah, I've seen how the army tries to civilize by slaughtering innocent women and children. This is calling war. it progress. Montford? Our orders are total war, and the casualties will continue to mount so long as the savages... You're the savage! Sergeant. Mr. Johnson, I do believe if we kill the savage, we save the man. Sir, 7th Cavalry has arrived. Good luck tracking your rustlers. I thought that was your job. Let's get out of here, Jack. Better be careful, Colonel. Someday you might run into some Indians that are ready for you. Easy, Walter. Easy. Colonel Custer, welcome to Fort Sill. You know those rustlers? They was looking to take more than my cattle. Home don't feel safe no more. How many head we got? Fifteen hundred bees, give or take. Why you ask? Drive them straight to market, Nabilene, Kansas. Use the money to build a new ranch out west. Oh, that's a big drive with 1,500 head. We'd have to go through Cheyenne, Comanche, and Kiowa territory. Yeah, just gotta ask permission from the tribes. Montfort Johnson, you are an honorable man. Here assembled are the great chiefs of many nations. You can lead your cattle through our lands. In return, our people can have some of your cattle if they are in need. 
There will be no hostility between us, no blood to stain the grass. We want it kept clean and pure. Agreed. Cousin Montfort? Do I know you? We're cousins. My grandfather was the brother to your grandma. I'm Chubb Moore. I don't ever remember my grandma telling me about a cousin with the unusual name of Chubb. Well, sir, here I am. I've been living over near Blue Creek. Heard things been going real well for you. That's your given name? Chubb? No, sir. Clarence. Folks started calling me Chubb because I like to eat and well, sir, I tend to get big and round in the middle. Man. What can I do for you, Clarence? Times have been tough lately, especially on some of the hardworking families around here. A lot of the little ones in these parts lost their folks. I think they'd be a great help to you, Mr. Johnson. Could you find it in your heart and let them roost at your place for a while? They'd be welcome, Chip. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, this is Frank Dwyer, Josephine Harris, and Lon Gray. I'm Mrs. Johnson. Welcome to our home. We got Lucinda Gray, Sally Thompson, Henry McLish, and we got one more. This is Alexander, but we call him Muggs. Well, welcome, all of you. Now, come on inside. We'll get cleaned up for supper. Come on. <sighs> I think we're gonna need a bigger house. Come on inside. I'm gonna need something from you, Clarence. Anything. How much you know about cattle? About as much as that fence post. <laughs> well, we're getting ready to do a cattle drive. So what do you know? Food. I know good eats, sir. And I sure can cook like the Dickens. Nobody can fry chicken like me. <laughs> I believe you. I guess we got ourselves a cookie, then. Welcome home, Cousin Clarence. Call me Chubb, Mr. Momford. Every single child in the Johnson family must have their own cow with the brand. The brand never leaves. It means that you are part of something bigger. You belong. You belong in this forever. Ain't that right, Muggs? What's the final head count? Just over 1,500. Knocked them all at the spring at the uh, Northwest Draw. most of our cattle. There's no guarantee. Well, we've been down to one skinny little cow before. I'm not worried. I've got a fire burning in me About to do some damage Cause I've been pushed past the limits
to throw back in his spurs was a jingling. And as he was riding, he's singing this song. Howdy, Cousin Monfort. Hey. Oh, sorry. Why is he always singing to the cows? Well, it keeps him calm. I've seen a herd spooked and stampede over nothing louder than a drop spoon. He don't say. Oh, dang. Careful now. You don't ever want to see a herd stampede. So what are these savages driving them? Probably Abilene. And how many head? Around 1,500, I count. And you're looking for cut? Well, I can't join you, so I'll just take a tent. The rest is yours. Hey, done. One other request. That half-breed engine. I want him dead. How much that gonna cost me? The right scan? That one's on me. That's a pleasure. <laughs> To keep you together, that's what I can do. Lay down, little doggy. Lay down. My horse is leg weary, and I'm awful tired. Bunch up, little doggies. I got a scalp for water. I'm gonna take your cattle, that pretty little wife, and your cat! I'll be seeing you! Everyone, listen up! There's some rustlers out there who want to take our cattle. They ain't gonna leave any of us alive. We can't let that happen. Okay. Uh -huh. You know who we are. We're warriors. Right. Yeah. We've been fighting all our lives. There ain't nothing new. Uh -huh. All right, then. We'll take watch and shifts tonight, guns loaded. I'll take the first one. Set the tongue to the North Star, boys. We leave at daybreak. Cross river here, and we push northeast. Yes, sir. Oh, all right. What we got, Clarence? Biscuit and beans. <laughs> Mumford. Yes, sir. There's something you should see. I 
How far are we from Abilene? About 30 miles past them. I'm sorry, Malfa, but they knew we'd have to pass. And they waiting for us. With more men. And more guns. Did you tell them? They're gonna be with you no matter what you decide. You know, a lot of them got wives and kids at home. Is there any way we can get around that bunch? Well, first, we'd have to Double back, head south, hit the river at its highest point. It'd add another week. Besides, they just keep on after us. Keep hitting us till we break. But it's your call, boss. Who? Straight through. Okay. right there. Let's bury him. Him first. He that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. Amen. Five ahead. <laughs> Boy, we did high cotton up. Papa, look, Papa's home. Edward Bryant, this is for you. And this is 
you, Frank. Here you go. This is for you, Sally. You're very welcome. I got something special for you. Is that the... I think we're made of money. How much? 30 ahead? I told you, didn't I? Oh, I told you! <laughs> I think it's about time we built that house. I'd like that very much. Pitch the hay in that loft. Yes, sir. Check on those heifers. Yes, sir. Who is that? It's Rising Wolf's wife. Asha, is everything all right? They took Rising Wolf and all the men. Who? The soldiers. Let's go. Excuse me. Yes. I need to speak to Lieutenant Pratt. Ah, uh, Lieutenant Pratt's gone. Where? Him and Sergeant Richter caught some Cheyenne criminals. Take him to Fort Marion down in Florida. Why? Too dangerous to keep here. Too dangerous for who, the Cheyenne? Good day, sir. I gotta go get him. Well, who's gonna take care of the ranch while you're gone? Well, Jack, stay here and help out. I don't like that you're taking E.B. Not at all. Florida is a long way from here. Well, he's not a baby anymore. I want him to know the world. Learn to be a man. He's gonna learn at my side, not on his own. Well, I guess I can't change your mind. Can I help you? Martin for Johnson? That's me. Montford, uh, I'm your father. No. Not you. <laughs> Swamps of Arkansas swallowed up all of our wagons. It was utterly impossible to get through. So what'd you do? Well... Charles. So nice of you to join us. Sorry, a boggy took your seat. Oh, forgive me, boy. I saw oh, hush. Guys. You're our guest tonight. Sit down. Um, see, Grandpa was just telling us about how... That's enough. He's not your grandfather. <clears throat> Monfrey, stop. Let the man talk. Ain't no man. To be Chickasaw is to be family. Then he's neither. There ain't no father. A real father never leaves. Pass me those potatoes. So it were Bryant. What was Mr. Johnson saying? Uh, well, he... Uh, uh, Mr. Johnson was uh, recollecting on how he got his name during removal times. Hmm. Sounds like a great story. Sure, he's full of them. 
Well, Mr. Johnson, tell us a story. I implemented an old English trick. Granny Vicey and Rebecca, your mother, and then I cut saplings and uh, laid them on the mud, and one on top of another until, until I was capable of holding the combined weight of our wagons and horses. Uh, by that way, we built a road straight through the swamp. Uh, some preferred to call it a bog. Charles became boggy because I led the people through the bog. That's a real nice story. Rupert. <clears throat> Maybe you could share with us a story about where you've been the last 30 years. Well, I'm sure everybody would love to hear that one. Make me sick. <laughs> I lost my appetite. I know you're awake. I don't like the children seeing you like that. You need to speak to that man and forgive him. Why should I? He just comes back and expects a big hug. No, I did everything right. Provided, protected, fed, clothed, put my life on the line. Everything to make sure our family was safe and could thrive. Never once complained, never shirked my duty. Forgive him. No, you're not like him, Mulford. It's true. You did everything you could not to become like your father. But with all that you've done for us, did you do it because you really loved us or because you were scared of becoming like him? Hmm? Did you act out of love or out of fear? Because that display at dinner felt like a scared man to me. I don't know why he left. I don't know why he left, and it bothers me. Why does he pick now to come back? Now that we're doing well? If I ever get you 10, he wants money. Just ask him, Montford. I'm sure he's got an answer. Took your time coming home. Grass wasn't so green out there, huh? It certainly was not. Could you forgive me, Vicey? I done did long ago. It's him you have to plead your case to. And because of you, he is not a forgiven man. You built quite the ranch here, Montford. It's uh, very impressive. I'm proud of what you. What do you want? No, you know what? Just tell me this. What was so bad about us that you needed to leave? I, you know, I, I waited every day for you. Every night. Counting on your word. You said you'd come back. I believed you. Walked the trail with your mother. I know the Chickasaw way. I do. Family is everything. She knew it. I just... I wished I could have lived it. I, uh, I well knew that every day I lost was time irretrievable. And... And I was afraid to return. You know, all any boy wants is a father to look up to. Trust. Know that he's gonna be there when you fall. You're the best example of that. You're the you... worst example of that. You know, I needed you. Adelaide needed you. And where were you? You promised you'd come back. Yeah, I deserve it. I know I can't bring back the years, and so 
can't ask you to accept me. But I hope there's a place in your heart for a weak man who simply wishes your forgiveness. That's all you came back for? Forgiveness? Oh, for me. You sure it wasn't something else? Nothing else. I'm not calling you father. Mary said you were planning a trip. A group of Cheyenne men were taken from their families. Held up in some old fort in St. Augustine. I'm gonna go get them, bring them home. I know that fort. Spanish built, Fort Marion. It's quite formidable. The English army couldn't take it in 1702 or 1740. What makes you think you can? I don't know, Mr. Johnson. I'll figure something out. I gave my word, and unlike you, I am to keep it. Friends in Washington. There's a senator who owes me quite a lot, actually. A U.S. senator? I might be useful. We'll leave tomorrow. Happily, I think on thee, and then my state, like to the lark at break of day rising from sullen earth, sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings that then I scorn to change my state with kings. It's going to be a long ride. My letter to the senator should arrive today. After all, he does owe me quite a lot, of course. Keep saying that like you wish it was true. What is it? Next stop, Blue Springs! So now, could I interest this studious young man in sugar ice on a warm, humid night? No, thank you, sir. Whereabouts might Fort Marion be? You referring to the local zoo? <laughs> That's what we call it, the zoo. Of course, instead of wild animals, we got wild Indians. I mean to tell you, they are scarier than the meanest zoo animal. Human animal is the most dangerous kind. <laughs> hey, we got friends in there. They ain't no animals. They didn't even do nothing wrong. From one cultivated man to another, I highly doubt that. You know, the old fort up yonder, it's past the schoolhouse. It's the oldest building in this uh, very old town. So please, enjoy your stay, gentlemen. Mr. Johnson, they will get a trial of that, I assure you. In the meantime, it is my endeavor to assimilate them into American culture. That way, if they are eventually released, they can contribute to society. Yeah. Lieutenant Pratt, I appreciate your sentiment, but the rule of law for any man in this country dictates a fair and speedy trial. I've noticed these men haven't been given any trial at all, not even a hearing. You a lawyer, sir? My name's Johnson. I'm friends with Senator Augustus Hill Garland of Arkansas and President Rutherford B. Hayes. I'm quite certain the senator has been in communication with you. No, sir, he has not. No correspondence of any kind? Look, Mr. Johnson, I can guarantee you and your friends that the 70 men in custody here are being treated with fairness and compassion. Compassion? Tell me how compassionate is it to keep them here when their wives and children are a thousand miles away? We're teaching them English skills, arithmetic, manners so that they can get the most of a cultivated life. Mr. Johnson, I'm at a loss. There are no Chickasaws here. Why do you make this your concern? Because I know what it's like to grow up without a father. And what you're doing here, it ain't right. No, sir. They ought to be at home providing for their families. That's where they belong. Not locked up in some filthy, godforsaken dungeon. If you had any real compassion, I think you'd understand that. I do understand that. 
I'm sorry. You men have traveled in vain. There is nothing that any one of us can do to change this situation. Good night. be from the better side of your lineage. Three generations of fools. Sergeant, that is an order! Come on, you heard him. Come on, come out of the side. I need you. I'm going in. I'm coming too. No, no. Yes, come on. Stay here. I... You stay here. You stay here. Help with the draw. Stay here. Come on, let's go, let's go. Come on. There's people in the back. People in the back. Let's go in. I'll be back, son. Stay safe. Stay low. Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> in here, in here. Here they are. Come on. Get a bucket. Get a bucket. Get a bucket. Go around back. It's fighting around back. <coughs> Here's another one. Go around. Go around. Keep Don't get your buckets back here. Go. Bring the buckets back. Is there more inside? Yes. Anybody else in there? Papa. Where's Montford? Where like I said, I didn't see him. Come on, come on. Stay here, PB. Around back. Clear, Sergeant. We all clear? As far as I know, sir. I'm gonna head back to the board, get some medical supplies.
over here. Come on. Papa, is, is, is he okay? Yeah, I got it, I got it. Papa. Son. <coughs> I thought I lost you. I'm okay. Your grandfather found me. <laughs> what were you doing in that room? Richter dropped me. <coughs> Richter! I can help you in, Mr. Shut Jones. up! Hey! 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 Oh, Arrest this man! Oh, 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 what the hell's going on here? This monster was trying to kill my son! You're delusional! What is going on? Trapped him purposely! Actually, sir, I'd like to report something. Whatever, he says to lie. In the hospital, I saw him. He jammed the door shut. I'm a sergeant. You gotta take a private's word over mine? Sergeant, at ease. Both of you, come with me right now. That man tried to kill my son! You gonna believe a ninja's word over mine? Quiet down. You're going away for life. How you feeling, Papa? I'm not gonna swallow charcoal. Thank you for coming, brother. Even if we can't be free, your presence brings us great strength. I'd like to thank you all. Uh, I'd like to thank you and, and these other men for helping to save our town. We're sorry. We could have we could have been better than we have been. Charles Johnson. Senator Garland, what an extreme pleasure to see you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for coming. I take it you received my letters. I did indeed. And it deserved a personal visit rather than written correspondence. Because as you know, I, uh, <clears throat> well, I owe you quite a bit. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been saying. <laughs> uh, I'd like you to meet, uh, well, this Mumford is... Montford Johnson. I'm a son. Very pleased to meet you, Montford. Very pleased. And this is? Edward Bryant. His grandson. Really? Lieutenant Pratt? Yes, sir. Friend of the Johnsons. I am. Well, I'm not sure there's much, as I've said, that can be done under your authority. I am following Army orders. It's not my own authority I come with, but that of the United States government. And, Lieutenant, we give the orders to the Army. Senator, if we could, it'd be best to discuss this in my office. As you wish. Senator, thank you so much. Don't thank me now. Still an uphill battle. Yes, sir. Gentlemen. Over for you? Eventually. I have to send him home. Why'd you leave? Because my bad outweighs my good. Why'd you come back? Maybe I'm getting old and running out of time, so. With what I have. 
have left? I need to make right many wrongs. What have you there? It's a brand. One I want to use for my own cow. You planning on following in your father's footsteps? Papa always told me a brand is one of the most important things. A brand's something that's permanently part of something bigger. Painful, though. Sir, it hurts at first, but pain goes away. Belongings forever. Very true. Cat finally decided to drug on in. They finally let you out. It's a good day. Is that really you? Yes. <laughs> Many of us have returned to our lodges. <laughs> Welcome home, brother. Today's the day for the real race. Ain't gonna be much different from last time. Uh, except it ain't your wedding day. <laughs> Let's go, come on. Come on.
Driving in your 